there's some things going on you probably know because it's now worldwide and my family has been going ballistic since I stopped uh, Jason um, from going coming after you with a crowbar when we were 16 and um, so my brother at that time gave me the blood is thicker than water speech and how I should spy on you and freaky things like that and I told him you know I don't want any part of your crazy life weirdness crap um, and after that he basically threatened my life that he and his friends were going to put me in a mental institution um, turns out it actually was a serious threat with lots of money behind it, and the police have been paid off by my stepfather and people to hunt me since then, and they're trying to lock me away in jail cells and mental institutions for stopping you, or stopping Jason from trying to, from going after you with a crowbar by jumping in front of him. You remember when that happened? It was a long time ago. I know. A little bit, not much. Okay, uh, so this video is um, a confession from Gregoire, um, actually more of an indirect confession from Gregoire, um, about an incident in high school when I was 16 where my brother came after him with a crowbar um, and I jumped in the way, uh, stopping my brother from bashing Gregoire's skull in with a crowbar. Um, and so let me kind of explain the situation and background. Um, when I was 16 uh, in high school, and I was kind of into building cars and kind of focused on myself as most people are, um, my brother was dating a Asian girl named Jen Yang, who is a cheerleader. Um, and my brother, two years older, uh, graduated and he went off to University of Colorado. Uh, Jen Yang and my brother tried having a long distance relationship um, and as I can recall at one point my brother saying uh, Jen should hang out with Greg, he's a really good guy. Um, and oh, you like the cup and ironically due to some of the weird accusations against me it's, it's kind of it. It'll probably make my accusers upset, even though nobody normally cares about cups with skulls on them and things like that. But anyways, um, so after this, um, there was some rumor that in Tom Hoke's station wagon, and I wasn't there, uh, Greg Waugh might have been kissing Jen Yang or something like this. Um, and I was kind of off, you know, I'm off living my own life. I don't really drama or gossip about things like that. They don't really matter much to me. I'm off reading books how to build engines and building cars and this and that. And um, Wasn't antisocial. had my friends and we kind of had parties and this and that. And, but, you know, I'm not that gossipy. Oh my god, this is the person I have to tell the world and this. Okay, so, and to me that's pretty normal. I don't really understand people sit there trying to collect dirt on other people and rid them of the world or belittle them all day. But anyways, um, needless to say, uh, we went to the family, our, my family, um, went to a family vacation out in like the Caribbean or Bahamas, uh, Nassau, and um, at that point, Jen Yang came along and she told my brother that she was breaking up with him. Um, now, my family um, seemed to get really mad that Jen Yang went on the vacation and told my brother there instead of telling him beforehand and not going on the vacation but me I'm not focused on those like these the way I would think about it is look these are two people and it didn't work out and so what I'm not nitpicking if I was being like a mother or father I guess because these aren't the things that really care about oh my god she used us for our money and then went on the vacation you know that that like angular uh, nitpicking calculated thinking that's the word I'm looking for they're calculated and everything and they're analyzing everything right and in my thought process is um, look it didn't work out between two people and they broke up and that's how Jen did it and there could be a hundred thousand different reasons why she went on that vacation maybe she just 
felt it'd be easier to uh, give him the news and a nice, beautiful, whatever. I mean, these are things that don't matter. The only thing that matters is it didn't work out between Jen and Jason. Okay, so needless to say, um, they break up. I guess, I think she probably tells him that she's dating Greg. Um, and that's it. Um, and um, after this, um, I don't know what time period goes by, but, you know, maybe a few months or something like this, I'm not sure. Um, I'm helping Greg build his Camaro. He goes out, I know how to build cars at this point. I taught myself how to build cars. Um, I help Greg drop a 350 Chevy and a 68 Camaro. Um, and a side note, I can recall his father getting mad because we pulled out the AC unit or something like that because we wanted to put, the fe the headers wouldn't fit, so we pulled out the AC unit and his father got mad, like put back in the AC unit or something like this, something like that, right? Needless to say, um, um, Greg comes over in his Camaro one day and my brother goes ballistic and he comes running at Greg with a crowbar. Um, so I jump in front of the crowbar and defuse the situation and that's pretty much it. It doesn't really sound like much on the surface, like some little messed up, angry, pissed off, nut job brother, my brother, um, which was out doing all their road rage shit, pinning it on me, I find out, right? Um, and that's that, right? Now after this, my brother gives me the speech, how blood is thicker than water, um, and in that con, oh, and he wants me to like spy on Greg, and he's telling me I should have been disseminating and collecting this information and giving it, giving him this information, this and that. And I'm kind of like, look, you know, I'm off living my own life, and you know, I don't agree with you. And blood is thicker than water, and this mobster go after people with a crowbar and spy on them and get information to use against them and all this, this type of thing, right? Now, little did I know that this blood is thicker than water thing actually links up to like a mafia thinking type of family, uh, which are actually all people with psychology degrees. And my father's an orthopedic surgeon, my brother's a urologist, and my bro my mother's an art therapist. Yet they're talking this mobster talk that blood is thicker than water, and it's not clicking to me that these psychologists are actually talking like. Um, Pablo Escobar here, right? Um, and I'm sure in other videos I talk about how my father hires Lorena Escobar to follow me around from college to college, having women try to set me up and things like this, uh, paid off, posing as his office manager. Now, no, Lorena Escobar has no relationship to Pablo Escobar. She's just some Latin girl who got some silicon tits and my father's playing this, his skull fucking games, right? Um, and so, um, you get the idea, and they played another game on me, this little scam on me, where I purchased an engine at Hawaii Racing, and Pineapple Joe tells me that the guy that sold the engine was, the front engine dragster engine, uh, was supposedly from a drug dealer. I don't, th I don't think many drug dealers get into NHRA, front en engine drag racing, but anyways, um, you know, but you can see the little scams or the we're going to rid you of the world and get with this information and try to make you think that it's your fault this is happening or for, from your choices in life and things that don't make any sense, right? Um, so anyways, um, that being said, um, the police, government, my family, they're all running around saying I suffer from delusional disorders, these things never happened, I'm just paranoid, this endless information, and I have these daily attacks recently, every single day of mass people, you don't talk or we kill you, you better let, accept what's going on or it's going to get a lot worse for you, no relaxing for you, nigger, which all of a sudden shifts to the black community, what does that have to do with an Asian girl and uh, cheating on my brother, right? The, all these events are coming from all directions, which make no sense. Um, so... Um, that's kind of the background that the police, government, and my family are trying to cover up, and they're mad at me, not because I'm running around going, J 
Jason did this, Jason did this, Jason did this. Um, because it's information that could possibly come out at one point this, that discredits their argument that Kevin's a violent paranoid schizo, Kevin suffers from nervous disorders, Kevin's bipolar, Kevin is... I don't know, there's hundreds of these psychological accusations. Um, the bottom line is that they're trying to make me look crazy so that anything I say isn't credible. And so... Um, um, that being said, I considered Greg a really good friend in high school. Uh, I went off to college. He went off to college. Um, we went our separate ways like most people do from high school and just had different lifestyles and lives. And that's it. And my family's working on all these schizo tactics, how I think I'm Greg and I think I'm in the military because Greg went to West Point and all these freaky things that don't make any sense. Um, and then they skip to like Kelly Hatch, I think I'm the army, and then they just go from thing to thing to thing, trying to collect every piece of clothing, if my hair's long, if it's short. It's the same thing like when Jen Yang goes on a, Jen Yang breaks up with my brother at Nassau. It's not about them breaking up, it's why did she do it there instead of at home? Is she trying to get a free ride? Right, you understand the, the screwed up thought process process of my family trying to nitpick and analyze and get dirt on anything well the real issue isn't is she trying to scam a free vacation the issue is look these two didn't work out the two lovebirds in high school didn't work out and so be it okay and that's that um so now um i i made several calls to greg uh, i got in 2018, like December 2018, uh, Greg and Jen send out like a, a letter to a list of all their old friends. Like, this is where we are now, showing, hey, we have three kids, we're married, blah, blah, blah. Um, remember, I'm 47. This, is, this incident happened at 16. Um, I have not spoke with Greg in 18 years. I get the letter. Um, it's actually buried under a stack of paper. So I never even saw the letter till the beginning of this month. It's May. Um, and I see it and I go, wait a minute, you know, I'm being accused. They're hunting me down for speaking out because my brother doesn't want me ratting him out about some 16-year-old incident that really isn't that big of a deal to begin with. But I'm being hunted down now with worldwide support for this thing and about a hundred other similar frame jobs or ways of trying to make me look crazy saying you don't talk or we kill you or lock you away. And jail cells or mental institutions trying to make it look like I'm crazy or suffer from childhood trauma or this or that, things that don't make any sense. But it's really about destroying my reputation and credibility so that the, anything truthful about me, Kevin Perlman, doesn't come out. So, um, I made several calls to Greg, I think, I'm not sure, maybe two or three but, uh, messages uh, over the past couple of weeks uh, because I wanted to talk to him about the situation so that it's solid and ironclad that Kevin is not delusional, he does not suffer from delusional disorders with Greg flat out stating, yeah, this did happen. Um, especially when Detective Shapiro, Detective Angela Stewart, paid off to cover these things up. Um, for example, when they had the guy attack me with the dog, which is all on video, and that Detective Shapiro had the video in front of her, she says it never happens and I suffer from delusional disorders with flat out video footage of the event. Okay, so what are they trying to cover up and hide, probably being paid off by my father, Ron Perlman, to silence me or lock me away for what I know. And they were trying to lock me away before I even realized what I knew. Um, so Greg, of course, didn't want to return any of my calls. Now that's kind of upsetting to me because... Um, when you go out on a limb for your friend and jump in front of a crowbar for them to save their lives, no matter what the situation is, I, you know, maybe my brother 
was just bluffing. Maybe he wasn't. What does it matter? I risked my life so that Greg could breathe. And he didn't want to call me back. Um, now, I don't want to get too deep into that because I have nothing against Greg. Like, I pretty much have nothing against anyone except for people that want me dead and gone and won't stop hunting me down trying to kill me um, on their personal 42-year personal vendettas, which I have no clue what the hell it's about. Um, so today I call up Greg. Um, now, I accidentally call Greg Jen, or Jen Yang's number, which there's two, a number one, a number, Jen Yang's number on top of Greg uh, was number and I'm going high speed and just thought it was Greg just like you always see the fax line and the phone line on companies you accidentally call the fax line right I did one of those right so I accidentally call uh, Jen Yang's number yeah uh, we're in the car driving and Greg's with me and call me back um, on, on Greg's line and I'll put you on speaker okay so that was good so Jen luckily Jen wanted me to speak with Greg um, and um, I just you know cut to the chase because I don't have much time. They're threatening to lock me away for seven years. They're trying to blackmail me and force me into mental institutions, uh, saying they might lock me away three to seven years with fabricated charges that uh, Officer Dincy has paid off to hunt me down and fabricate and falsify police charges with jury tampered juries, uh, lawyers being paid off to lock me away for what I know. Uh, so I just cut to the chase on the phone with Jen Yang uh, and Greg Wah in the car on speaker. Um, and um, I first I ask, I tell Greg exactly what's going on, which you're going to hear. And um, of course, Greg doesn't want to do an interview, like a statement or an interview on video, which is a little upsetting to me because my life is now at stake and Greg's kind of like abandoning me. Now he can have all sorts of reasons. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to be out there in front of this insanity. Um, but yet, it sounds like he owns his own company, some lock company or something. And um, I, I pretty much saved his life and here we are, it's coming back around. I'm hunted by worldwide campaigns for this thing and a hundred other things like this all being pinned on me and my good friend Greg Waugh doesn't want to jump on video on my behalf and say yes this did happen Kevin's not delusional now I'm not Greg if you're watching this I'm not really trying to make any direct judgments towards you I'm just stating the situation because my life is and has been at stake especially 16 years old since I kind of jumped in front of that crowbar for you um, so um, that being said, um, I still have these conversations showing that the event did occur. Uh, they are not direct statements. Um, yes, this did happen. But when I when I say, uh, Greg, um, you know, the cops are hunting me down because um, I jumped in front of a crowbar. Greg states that was a long time ago, showing yes. This did happen. I do not suffer from delusional disorders. I am not a schizophrenic. I am not a violent schizophrenic. I am not a paranoid or a violent paranoid schizophrenic. I do not suffer from delusional disorders. Yes, this did occur. Even though it's not that big, it shouldn't have been that big of a deal. Someone doesn't want me talking. And they are investing insane amounts and billions of government dollars over it so that I don't talk about it and I shouldn't have to talk about it and if they weren't hunting me down with these mass groups watching over me we're watching you and you don't say anything about your life to anyone while you're in isolation being hunted and attacked um, it never would, would have come to this I never would have cared um, now the other thing I mentioned on the phone which I didn't really also get a direct answer is that my family is accusing me of somehow doing something to Jen Yang. Now, the reason I mention this is because, or let me rephrase that. 
I supposedly did something to sabotage the relationship or something like this. And the reason I say that is because my father's running around telling the world that I've somehow made my mother and him get divorced, I was a public nuisance, um, I've supposedly done everything to all my father's girlfriends, uh, Shelly Humphreys, my father's wife now, when they were about to get married, she lashes out in anger at me saying, now you have an evil stepmother while going ballistic on me with her son Eric. Once again, doing nothing to her or anyone else. Uh, my father accusing me of doing things to his French girlfriend, Alexandra, which my brother and all of his friends hated and they were pinning on me. Um, all sorts of similar things and I believe my mother blamed, probably blaming me for them getting divorced with my real father, Ron Perlman, and Nina Perlman and Ron Perlman. Once again, did nothing to them, was minding my own business, building cars and focused on myself. Um, so then, you know, my mother asked me all these investigative questions about Jen being in NASA and this and that. I believe what they're trying to say is, hint is that um, she went to NASA, I supposedly did something to her, and she broke up with Jason and David Gray. You know, some lame story like that, like they've been doing from thing to thing. Um, so, of course, I tell them in the car that I'm being accused of somehow doing something to Jan. And also, the reason I also kind of picked up on that was because years ago, uh, Jan's sister, Madeline, I saw her somewhere at a clothing store, I think she owned or something like that. And she was very interrogating and like checking me out, like, is this guy crazy or this or that. Um, asking, trying to get provable questions to check me out and things like this, right? Okay, so you get the idea that I'm definitely being accused of doing something to Jen Yang, especially with all the Jens sent after me, like Jen has now saying that I supposedly hit her with a mask on and she never directly said it to me. Um, Jen Hess was sent after me, pretending to be a schizo, uh, pretending to be Jesse Jane, calling herself Jesse, um, Jesse the, Jane the porn star. Um, just like Julia, Stephanie Schuyler off IRC was pretending to be Julia Hayes, uh, a redhead pretending to be a redhead playba playboy girl. Um, anyways, um, so, um, Jen Yan, or, Jen Hess was sort of trying to prove things about Jen Yang. Ironically, my brother marrying another Jen, Jen Pilchik, uh, with her father, a court reporter, um, working with the judicial system to try to get dirt to use against me, and Debbie Woolman, purchasing my adjoining wall here, who's never lived in her place for 18 years with audio surveillance equipment. Remember, my brother trying to make me look crazy, uh, telling me after he gives me the blood is thicker than water speech that he and his friends um, made a teacher mentally ill and um, he has a bug in my room and they're doing every they're, um, they're listening to everything I do on the radio to try to flip me into a state of paranoia then sending Mike Huntley after me for 15 years um, and at the end at 29 Mike Huntley going from I'm your friend to I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with, we're using the system against you, uh, you better have a careful life, uh, walk around the office singing World of Paranoia, letting me know that he's trying to make me mentally ill, uh, with my brother, my brother and his friends, me and my friends put a, according to my brother, his statement, me and my friends, blood is thicker than water, me and my friends put a teacher in a mental institution. Right? Well, here we are. I'm 47. The judicial system is threatening to throw me in jail for seven years. Three to seven years for doing nothing wrong, even though that's not what they have on paper. And um, giving me an ultimatum to check into a mental institution for six months. Does that sound a little strange? Okay. So, um, you will see in this conversation that Yes, I did do the right thing and try to set for, save my drum in front of a crowbar to save my friend's life, and that the people who have motive to bury me isn't because I've done anything wrong. It's because they don't like me and they want to rid me of the world for what I know. Um, now I'm not 
saying anything negative about Greg Wall about that. Want to take that information is up to you. Um, I much rather would be talking about this with Greg Wall and a camera saying this is a messed up situation and they're coming after me for saving his life and for what I know. Okay, so while this isn't directed at Greg in a mean way, um, it's a little dirt digging-ish, but it explains the situation a little better. So my family and the police and the government are trying to cover up all these things and they're saying that I'm a public nuisance. Right, while having worldwide groups sit there and attack me over and over endlessly until I'm dead and gone. Um, well, some of the things that, you know, these are just 16 year old prankish things that don't really matter, but they're turning them into issues to attack my credibility, so I kind of have to defend myself. Um, when I was friends with Greg and six, at 16 years old, some of the things Greg did, uh, when he was at my father's house on DeSoto, um, he would play like porno and turn on the loudspeaker outside for the neighbors to hear. Um, and um, not that anyone could really care, especially maybe at the time, but not for 40 years. Um, so that was one of Greg Waugh's prankish things. He would play on my father's speakers outside porn. Um, and it wouldn't last very long, and we'd just shut it off or whatever. Um, you know, like, Greg, don't do that. Come on, right? Um, another thing um, Greg did is I had a PA in my Trans Am, and Greg picked up the PA speaker and started shouting at other cars, and the cars started chasing me, and I was like, come on, Greg, don't don't shout at the other cars. And that was on Victory uh, by... Let me think. It's been so long. Valley Circle Road... Yeah, not Victory. Valley Circle Road, I think. I can't remember the streets. It's by the 101 Freeway and Valley Circle Road. Um, by Calabasas High, whatever, leaving Calabasas High. Um, a friend bumper tapping me, I think, from his car, and then from behind, and then Greg Wall picking up the speaker, getting people to chase us. Um, and then me going, come on, Greg, you know, stop that, whatever. Because that was my brother's thing, getting people to chase him and things like that in their cars. And my brother and his friends going ballistic on people, right? Okay, so um, at one point the neighbor got pissed off because our dog Rhoda, that my father would put shock collars on. Why would my father put shock collars on Rhoda? Well, I'm not going to go into the how my family's running around saying that I'm the bad seed from the movie 1946, Bad Seed, working with Kelly Hatch, who wanted me to see that movie so bad, with the bad seed girl Rhoda killing everyone, um, hinting that I'm a murderer and things like that, working with the LAPD. Um, just trying to make it look like I conform to media and I'm crazy. Um, at one point, Rhoda was locked outside and we were inside. You know, dogs generally run around outside a lot. And Rhoda wouldn't stop barking. Woof, 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 woof. And one of the neighbors flipped out, and um, one of the neighbors flipped out and was yelling down the hill, if you don't stop your dog from barking, or I'm going to put poison in your dog's food or something, right? You know, things that, angry neighbors, whatever. There's no actual poison that was put in food or whatever. But um, I just sort of wanted to give you a background of how, while I'm being called, a public nuisance at 16, so much so that there's a worldwide campaign to lock me in jail cells and mental institutions, which doesn't make any sense um, over things that don't really matter. Um, these things are all sort of being put on me. Kevin's a public nuisance. Kevin did all these things when he was a kid, and now Kevin's here and he's doing all these other things, but I haven't done a damn thing then and now. The only thing I did is went out and built cars. And I might have sped a little a few times. That's it. Oh, and peeled out. I peeled out and I sped a little and I built some cars. Okay, if you're telling me that justifies billions of dollars, government dollars, to eradicate someone, something's going on. It isn't about cars or anything else. Okay, linking to government kill eradication operations starting at five years old. Um, flagging operations. Okay, so... You know, I'm not really trying to speak poorly of Greg, and these aren't things that anyone really care about anyways, 
But I'm kind of making you understand that these all these public nuisance things or Kevin's a horrible monster aren't my things. They're everyone else's. They're my brother's road rage shit. They're Greg Waugh's shit. They're this, these people's crap. Now remember, uh, I'm not allowed to, according to my father and Mike Huntley, originally my brother's friend, you're not allowed to defend yourself while hunting me down with worldwide support. Now my father's paying off the police to hunt me down and fabricate all these uh, police charges that I've hit women. Um, Jen Yang claiming that saying that someone hit her with a mask on then coming over to my house the next day. Um, nothing. No bruises. I ask her, you know, you said someone hit you. Um, oh, I just put on makeup. And um, after this, the world's told that I hit Jen Yang and I'm a woman beater. And that all applies to them taking my artwork in college and saying I'm a violent paranoid schizo who is confessing to crimes through my artwork. Just pure insanity. Okay, now remember my mother is an art therapist. Okay, so I would think that um, if you go out for someone on a limb to jump in front of a crowbar, they would kind of be the first to be there for you to say Jason Perlman with everyone working with them or making up every lie known to man about his younger brother and blasting it across the entire planet trying to make me look like a public nuisance saying I've committed all these crimes when if any crime has been committed it was my brother Jason Perlman who has threatened to lock me in a jail cell and mental institution with now billions of government dollars hunting me down all day and night with worldwide support for probably a hundred things a hundred incidences similar to this one where I simply jumped in front of the way of a crowbar saving Gregoire's life. Uh, my brother then trying to pin all of his road rage things on me. Um, my brother doing all these things to my father's girlfriends probably. Um, and then saying I'm sabotaging their relationships. You name it. Uh, thing after thing after thing. Uh, like this, but most importantly, to make a long story short, while they're trying to cover it up, saying, I suffered some traumatic event when I was a young child and I can't let go of it, while watching worldwide groups take turns in an angry rage every single day of my life, all day, trying to make me look crazy, and saying that I suffer from delusional or disorders, and these things like uh, this incident with Greg Waugh never happened, well, here it is on video. Gregoire's indirect confession, he does not deny it. He says, that was a long time ago, saying, yes, it did happen. I mentioned to, to Jen Yang uh, and Gregoire on the phone, um, I believe they're accusing me of somehow doing something to Jen Yang or trying to sabotage either Gregoire or Jason Perlman. Relationship uh, with Jen Yang, they can't really answer in a negative way, and I say, you know, if someone has some argument, then they need to state it. But like usual, like all these accusations in my life, there's no opposing argument. My accusers, and I'm not saying Greg or Jen have accused me of everything, but somebody has, uh, being all the Jens sent after me to get me into coerced false confessions and trying to cover it up with lies that I hit Jen Yang, or Jen um, Hess and things like this. Um, and then making up lies that I'm a schizo and I'm crazy and I just think too much and I'm overanalyzing while watching worldwide groups threaten my life and hunt me down and things like this uh, and the physical attacks on other videos how I'm a snitch and I'm dead and things like this uh, you get the idea I have to be a snitch for something um, not I'm a snitch for things that didn't happen and I'm imagining it um, from the dog attacker who physically attacked me with a dog, a police trained canine. Um, you get the idea that um, right here is direct proof and evidence that I'm not a suffer from a delusional disorder, that someone has something to hide, so much so that offing me, locking me away in mental institutions or jail cells or killing me is their answer to silencing me about things I never even knew were going on until 29, Mike Huntley saying, um, we're using the system against you. you, we've given you enough rope to hang yourself with, blah, 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 and then uh, singing World of Paranoia, telling me I have to live a careful life, 
uh, and then hunt me down with worldwide groups trying to create and make it look like I'm a violent, paranoid schizo um, and trying to get me to react in such a way with the police, which they fail on every occasion to hit someone, to threaten someone. Um, and then Sean Dinsey getting mad that they couldn't get what they want with his things on his Facebook. How do we force people into mental institutions that he just doesn't like? Um, showing that he's paid off by my father, for sure, my family, to have me hunted and eradicated. Um, at least my brother and my father, I know that for sure. Um, and showing that, um, and I believe Arnold, Arnold Silver too, showing that um, I am literally being hunted since a young child. And the lies from the LAPD police government that I'm crazy, a violent, paranoid schizo, that this event never occurred and it's some childhood delusion that's stuck in my head and I can't live my life from some childhood delusion or trauma, traumatic event and that doesn't have anything to do with the things being done at the current moment all day and night by the masses saying you don't talk or we kill you or rid you of the world, uh, which is all on video over 15 terabytes now. Um, of all day and night attacks and people stalking me on these gang, gang stalking events. Um, this is direct proof back to 16 years old that yes, my brother did go after um, Gregoire with a crowbar. I jumped in front of it and stopped him and for some reason I'm a bad guy and need to be eradicated for jumping in front of a crowbar and saving Gregoire's life. Now I just even though this is kind of irrelevant, I just thought I would throw this in there. Uh, Greg Waugh, we were, we were pretty good friends, I mean, um, and Greg Waugh is like a 6'8 basketball player, and the funny thing is we always used to joke that uh, Jen Yang, I think is, she's really small, like 4'9 or something, I don't know. So we used to joke, that, like we see Greg Waugh walking with Jen Yang, and he's like this beanpole, like holding, and Jen Yang's like holding his hand like this, right? And it's kind of humorous because super small and super big, right? Whatever. Um, now, there's this whole tangent of games in my life. My family's mad at me for going to the arcade when I was a young kid before in middle school, them driving me to the arcade at Topanga Mall and also playing games on my brother's Atari 800 computer. Now, I don't understand how anyone could be mad at someone for playing games um, on computers, um, but they're using this whole thing with the community and mass groups, how this whole thing's a game, and while trying to force me into a mental institution, Deborah Bear, a psychologist, is trying to give me disinformation with my stepfather Arnold to trick me into going into mental institutions uh, for example, they're saying that I, even though Sean Dinsey made up lies that I supposedly violated my probation on his original fabrications, he's now claiming with the Starbucks Corporation that uh, I've supposedly threatened to kill all Starbucks customers right before the end of the summary probation at a year's end. I have video showing I didn't do anything to anyone but get talk to a camera with their attacks while they're attacking me and explaining to people in the camera that are viewers of the video what's being done to me, them calling up Dinsey and Dinsey fabricating lies and then Dinsey hopping over my fence and trying to break in my property uh, with his crew on three to six, three, three or four occasions on video and I think a total of six times trying to break in my house to try to plant things in my house and things like this. Um, and um, with thug letters from Starbucks showing that they're trying to cover up what I have on video, their gang stalking operations. Um, but while threatening me, we might throw you in jail from three to seven years for these falsified convictions, uh, jury tampered juries, and paid off judges. Um, they're basically threatening, hey Kevin, before even going up, before even knowing if you have a probation hearing, you should go up to the judge because he could be pretty stringent and throw you in jail for seven years, so you should check into this mental institution for six months. Right? Trying to make me look crazy on court transcripts and in front of judges to lock me away, and well, if someone spends 42 years trying to force you into a mental institution, they're not going to want to ever let you out. I can assure you that, and people generally don't force people into mental institutions because those are 
crimes to begin with. Um, so um, you get the idea, but this video is direct proof that the things I'm talking about from my childhood did happen. Things like Mr. Quigley in my 10th grade English class telling me to punch Paul Schaefer to try to set me up to make me look like a violent paranoid schizo did happen and you are seeing confessions, indirect, indirect confessions, but confessions because he did not deny it. He did not say, Kevin, that never happened, you're crazy. He said, that was a long time ago. Okay, so what you're seeing is a confession that the things that I'm told, I'm imagining, did in fact happen and someone has something to hide, like my brother going after Gregoire with a crowbar or Mr. Quigley told to uh, tell me to punch other students that didn't work. Okay, so um, also uh, the game tactic, which there's somehow alluding that I think life's a game or something like that. Like I said, based on going to arcades as in middle school and playing on my brother's Atari 800, um, which they didn't like me playing the game Sundog, where um, I think I was, I don't know if I deviated from the tactic of the game or the the um, the purpose of the game because it was so long ago. Um, but what happened was I was buying and selling guns from planet to planet and buying them for cheap at one planet, uh, selling them for a higher price at another planet, and I finally was able to afford the warp drive engine or something like this to get to the next galaxy. And um, at that point, my brother got mad for some reason, and he deleted the game settings or whatever. I don't know why, but... Um, so they're sort of trying to make it look like I conform to that and things like this don't make any sense. Um, so the the game um, the game tactics. For example, when I was working with Mike Huntley uh, after he wanted me to come back from University of Colorado and start a company with him in my office, uh, he was rattling off how um, he wanted to play World of Warcraft with Bob. Uh, Bob Sandler and I was kind of like, look, Mike, you know, we gotta work, you know, we we gotta make money here. We don't want to sit around the office playing World of Warcraft. Well, it turns out that, that was actually like an indirect threat to me. That he was gonna rile the masses against me with my brother being my one of my brother's friends. And at 29, when he shifted to, um, we're using the system against you and all this, noticing worldwide people taking turns on me in anger and rage. And quoting lines from Crocodile Dundee, something like, uh, when someone has a when someone has a problem or something, we tell Wally, and Wally tells the town, and no more problems. Something like this, right? Like letting me know that he's literally disseminating lies and defamation, slander about my name to the world um, on these internet-built and government-built terror systems to eradicate me. Um, Later on, after my father had Lorraine Escobar contact me to hire me at his company, uh, keep in mind we were in my father's building at the time because my father manipulated me into moving into his building with, hey, uh, Shelly moved out of their office and here's a really good Venture Boulevard price. Like, how could you say no to get me into his office to jack into our hub switch with Mike Huntley to put spyware and things on my computer? Um, and try to make me mentally ill and all these things. Um, somehow the conversation topic comes out with Elsie Sandoval in my father's office, and uh, I mentioned, yeah, well, you know, Mike Huntley is working the game tactic with World of Warcraft, and she gets mad because I said that, and then she tells everyone I hit her, right? Um, now, also with the game tactic, um, Mike Huntley wanted me to see Fight Club and the movie The Game, trying to hint that I'm an asshole and trying to flip me out and make me think that like this is some kind of game of my life because I'm an asshole and I need to be taught a lesson. Well, you know, not only is this game been going on 18 slash 42 years, um, but I never specifically said anything that I think I'm in the movie The Game or whatever, right? You, you get the idea, right? But it's 
to this, this we're going to try to make it look like Kevin conforms the media and then tell the world that Kevin thinks he's in the game. Just the next thousands and thousands and thousands of tactics to disseminate to the world to turn them against me. Um, now, also, there was a girl at the park. Now, the park, like thousands of people a day, it escalated. It started at smaller groups and then larger and larger groups kept showing up. We don't want you taking walks around the park or sitting in a park relaxing with threats, subtweets all around the world, and some of them are like, no relaxing for you, nigger, and things like that. Pardon my language. And um, showing the hate and rage directed at me for whatever reason I can't conceive of it. It's so strange. Um, and yet I'm imagining it. Nobody knows me. That's the other thing that doesn't make sense because I'm now ten times more known than Donald Trump, but yet I'm not allowed to know what this is about. Um, so uh, one girl kept saying, well, Kevin, you know, what's the end game? And this was after the movie Ender Game came out. As if trying to sort of make me think I'm in the movie Ender Game, right? Um, and I said, you know, there is no end game. It's a mass worldwide targeting to eradicate me, right? Um, and then she got mad because I was passing out cards because they wouldn't stop showing up at the park with their terror tactics. One of those tactics was literally thousands of people per day with black pants and pink shirts and things like this with hundreds of other ones in that local area. Uh, cars and twos at the park, identical cars and twos, even larger groups, maybe like 10 pickup trucks together, 40% uh, of the park, people showing up with no plates when I get there, things like this, all to try to agitate me or trigger me to flip me out, to try to make it look like I'm a violent paranoid schizo, but yet they didn't get what they wanted. So the lady would take, I'd pass out the cards and put the cards on the cards saying, you've been lied to, here's my website, you know, stop attacking me. And, um... She would walk and take the cards off the car and rip them up and throw it on the ground, right? After preaching the whole weird Ender Game thing, like... Now, think about that, because now Sean Dinsey is fabricating lies. Not only am I supposedly the next Vegas shooter, and also with Victoria Walker, the next Unabomber they sent into my life for, I don't know what, 15 years? I can't even keep track anymore. Um, but... Um, with Michael Bialis and Matt Von Malaki, whatever, and just so many people. Um, but now he's claiming making up fabrications that supposedly threaten to kill all Starbucks customers, working with Starbucks employees, saying I'm not allowed at Starbucks or any other coffee shop in the world, but there's no actual reason. Um, just your kind can't exist. And uh, yet they're fabricating things that aren't true, obviously. Um, but... Um, most importantly, that it's all on video showing I didn't do anything to them but document what they're doing to me, right? But if you're sort of picking up on the little reading in between the lines and the subliminal, uh, she's talking about the movie Ender Game after the movie Ender Game comes out asking me what the end game is, and then Starbucks customers with Dinsey are saying, um, I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers because in the end of the movie Ender Game, uh, he destroys the entire alien planet, right? Okay, you get the idea, right? But these aren't directly said, so if I pick up on the hints and say it, oh, Kevin's crazy, see, Kevin's a violent, paranoid, schizo who conforms the movies, isn't that, leaving out the entire story. Um, and remember, these psychological warfare things go from movie to movie, person to person, thing to thing, clothing color to clothing color, car color, car, car patterns, the car patterns, people collecting and mimicking things I say from Twitter, Facebook, or personal conversations over and over. In the thousands, the tactics are literally in the thousands worldwide, just all day and night, 24-7, uh, literally some days 100,000 to a million people per day, um, which is, I find out 18 years ago, to lock me away and incarcerate me for life for the crime of finding out at 29 that they wanted to eradicate me on a more subtle level and rid me of the world in a more clean way with no loose ends and now the cat's out of the bag, right? So now they've ramped up their attacks since 29, uh, 18 years ago. So, um, also, uh, Sia Nijitang, a Asian girl at University of Colorado, I met on IRC, 
um, whose father was supposedly a judge, um, befriended me on IRC, stalking me and hunting me. Um, I don't know if her father was really a judge, but um, and then at one point wanted me to fly to Colorado so, so she could blow me off in hopes to try to trigger me into a reaction to go after her, make it look like I'm going after her. The same tactic done with Christina Stalinsky, uh, the same tactic, kind of sort of done with Skylar Stephanie, who I flew out to Florida, um, and um, she gave me a blowjob, and I said, I wish we had more time. And by the way, she lived by my brother, which is interesting, who I, she, I met her in the Colorado channel when I lived in Colorado. Um, I said, I wish we had more time, and then she says, yeah, sure you do. And then she says, okay, you know, I got to leave and go to the airport. And then um, on the way, a cop pulls her over for no reason and hopes that he could sort of scare me into some kind of freaky confession or something like this, uh, which I didn't know at the time. Uh, similar thing done with Kelly Hatch, actually. And um, that was that, and then it was how Skylar told me if I want to be her friend, she was going to treat me like shit, and I told her never contact me again, and then, of course, that's turned around on me and given out to the entire planet, how I abused her and did this to her and did that to her. Right, you get the idea. These, these women are being sent after me, possibly even paid off, um, and I can rattle off hundreds of scenarios like that uh, all throughout my life um, from a young age. Um, now, talking with Greg on the phone later on, he says that Greg... Jen Yang's father was never a judge. I can't tell you if that's true or not. All I can tell you is that's what I thought. And the reason I might have thought that um, is because my brother might have told me that because they were doing all these freaky things to try to flip me out. So you get the idea, right? Um, like, for example, before Kelly Hatch followed me up to Southern Oregon State College, uh, my brother and his friends were, th were singing because her name is Kelly, 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 K-E-L-L-Y. Now, I didn't know why they were singing it because I wasn't friends with Kelly. I had no interactions with Kelly in Calabasas High. Uh, I wasn't in her cliques. Uh, the only reason I even barely, kind of sort of barely recognized Kelly Hatch in my dorm living above me um, was she just kind of sort of looked familiar. I said, you know, you look familiar, but I don't know where you're from. And we started talking, and it turned out she was from, she went to Calabasas High for two years, supposedly, then moved to San Francisco. Now, she obviously was sent out for me and paid off by the government to hunt me down and try to eradicate me with the same types of tactics that all these other women are doing, that the police, my family, are trying to cover up um, but you can understand how my brother and friends are planting the seed and then these things happen and then there's connections now is Jen Yang's father a judge or was he or I have no clue because like usual I was never really friends with Jen Yang you know we had a few interactions she was mostly around my brother doing their things and that was it. And then she met Greg, and I wasn't really around that. And then I went off to college, and they got married and whatever. And I still wasn't around that. So the point I'm making is, like, all these accusations, like the Carissa Brand scam, where I supposedly made Paul, Girl Paul Humphrey's girlfriend, Carissa Brand, check into a mental institution. I was never around Carissa Brand to do these things to her, right? Um... So that's the point. So if anything were to be actually done to Carissa Brands, which never were, it would have been by Paul. Um, but yet, there's worldwide groups hunting me down with Paul, with Carissa, with everyone, with these fabrications and lies. Just like Corey Bixby. I drove her home. I did her a favor. I drove her home. There's worldwide groups to kill me over Corey Bixby, right, for driving her home. And actually, secretly, I kind of had like a little crush-ish thing on her. And I was afraid to talk to her. But we don't need to get in that. Okay, so um, anyways, you get the idea. So here is the entire uh, phone call showing um, Gregoire uh, confessing indirectly, confessing that yes, this did happen. I do not suffer delusional disorders like Detective Shapiro 
show, Detective Angela Stewart, the entire Topanga Division, and police worldwide are trying to cover up uh, with NSA, FBI, and you name it. Um, yes, it did happen. All the things I'm telling you did happen. Some of my intricate details might be a little off, like the Jen Judge thing. But the bigger things, yes, they all did happen. And this proves that my brother does have motive to put me in a mental institution because that was his threat. That threat, threat, whatever you want to call it, a threat to stop me from having a life, put me in a mental institution. It did happen. Going after Greg with a crowbar over Jen did happen. Linking to Jen has sent after me. Uh, my brother's wife, Jen Pilchick, working on me and all these other freaky things. And Jen has, for some reason, pretending to be Jesse Jane. Why? And then I find out through her friend, I can't remember her friend's name, going, why is she, why is she calling herself Jesse? And then she's trying to turn around, saying I made her mentally ill or something like this, right? You know? Yeah, sure. You get the idea, right? Now, you can put that together with all the fabrications from Jen Hess, Julia Sophia, Rody Morales, Tom Farley, Paul Humphrey, Carissa Brands, Christy Rennell, whatever. You know, I can list off a thousand people like this. Okay, so here it is. Hello? Hi, I was looking for Greg. Um, may I ask who's calling? Uh, Kevin Perlman. Is this Jen? Oh, yes. Hey, you know what's so funny? Did you just try calling my phone? Yeah, I did, actually. I, you know, sometimes you go too fast or whatever, but yeah, I called your phone accidentally. No, because we were actually driving. So Greg's driving, uh, and we saw the phone number. It was like, New York? I don't know anyone. I got like, I, I oh. kinds of, like, weird phone calls, so we just declined it because we didn't know it was. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, at this yeah. day and age, you can get a phone number anywhere. Does everything just reroutes? But yeah. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's what's up? I mean, here, do you want me to put you on um, speaker? Yeah, you actually, you put me on speaker with Greg. I haven't talked to him. Call, call back and call my phone number again, because that'll automatically pick up on my car. Okay. Yeah, call call my number again, and we'll pick up. And okay. Greg can talk to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. Hello? Hi, there, Ken? Yeah, I can hear you. It's a little... Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. So what... Oh, can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, your, your voice got deeper with age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe it's just all the stress and having kids and all that kind of crap, right? Yeah, that'll do it. Um... So anyways, listen, I'm just going to kind of cut to the chase really fast. Um, uh, there's some things going on you probably know because it's now worldwide, and my family has been going ballistic since I stopped uh, Jason um, from going coming after you with a crowbar when we were 16, and... Um, so, my brother at that time gave me the blood is thicker than water speech and how I should spy on you and freaky things like that. And I told him, you know, I don't want any part of your crazy life weirdness crap. Um, and after that, he basically threatened my life that he and his friends were going to put me in a mental institution. Um, turns out... It actually was a serious threat with lots of money behind it, and the police have been paid off by my stepfather and people to hunt me since then, and they're trying to lock me away in jail cells and mental institutions for stopping you, or stopping Jason from trying to, from going after you with a crowbar by jumping in front of him. You remember when that happened? It was a long time ago. I know. A little bit, not much. Yeah, like, um, you had 
started dating Jen, and Jason got mad because Jen broke up with you, or sorry, Jason broke up with Jen, or Jen broke up with Jason, Jason got mad, you came over my house, we were working on your Camaro or whatever, um, and he ran after you with a crowbar, and I jumped in front of him, um, turns out, my family's been spewing lie after lie that I've somehow done something to Jen, uh, I think you're on speaker, right, Jen, saying, yeah, our two kids are back here, too. Oh, sorry. If you want me to... Yeah. All right. Okay, so anyways, Jen, they sent some Jens after me to play schizo games and try to flip me out and get coerced false confessions that they're trying to cover up. All sorts of freaky things with the psychology community and my family right. because my brother got mad, right? And um, I just wanted you to know this because they're threatening to lock me in jail possibly between three to seven years or giving me an ultimatum to self-check into a mental institution um, to cover up what Jason, that, that this is, it's not just that one thing, but that one thing's pretty significant um, with Jason. Uh -huh. And so judges have been paid off, uh, police have been paid off, like lead officer Sean Dinsey fabricating false police reports and freaky things like this. Um, I've literally been hunted for 18 years, uh, a lot longer, but finding out with Mike. Did you, did you ever meet Mike Huntley? Uh, my, remember when, um, remember when, um, I can't remember if you came down to our office or you just called me and we, I met you in Valencia, or I saw, I, I saw you and Jen in Valencia. Uh, you were in I, something like that, right? You were yeah, in I? Um, yeah, close. Uh, Tarzana on Ventura Boulevard. There we go. Yeah, I came down once. Right. Okay, so Mike was originally... Mike is on a bug or something like that? Yeah. Bug yeah, a yellow like bug. Or something. Yeah, right. uh, Paul Humphrey and Mike Huntley both had the bugs. Um, okay. Mike Huntley was originally my brother Jason's friend. And... All right. Mike Huntley called me up. He had been stalking me all that time. I didn't know it. He called me up from uh, University of Colorado wanting me to move back and start a company with him and my family putting on the pure pressure to get me close to him and my father uh, within my father's office. All these freaky things. And at 29, something like six years after being in business with him, he flipped. He did a 180. Um... Instead of being a friend that wants to make money, it was, I've given you enough rope to hang you. Uh, we're using the system against you with the police. Uh, telling me that he's going to make me mentally ill and rid me of the world. Things like this. Right? Wow. Yeah, endless like death threat after death threat. Things that I, I couldn't comprehend were going on. But he links back to Jason and me jumping in the way of the crowbar. And then sort of following me around going... If he figures it out, you know, off him, right? And so, um, the police have actually been hunting me, and my family seem to be paying him off, uh, like Arnold Silver in Canada, and um, they're trying to cover it up and make me look crazy, just for what I know. Does that make sense? A little bit. I mean, I, yeah, families are crazy. There's no doubt about it. But, <laughs> yeah, not this crazy, but <laughs> extreme, right? right that's extreme. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just wanted you to know because uh, I don't know if if they get what they want, if they lock me away for seven years, they're threatening. This, I have a court date, the twenty third, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. on a summary probation hearing. Because they fabricated all the charges, my lawyer, even though I have photos and videos proving my innocence, my lawyer refused to use it, um, uh, saying it's inadmissible as evidence and lying and trying to cover it up. Um, the jury was jury tampered. The judges clearly knew who I was because they were taking part in the provokings, right, knowing that, showing they knew who I was. Um, so everyone was paid off. Um... And so I have my, like, ending, first year ending summary probation from these falsified charges, which Jen probably knows, um, because I think her father's a judge, right, um, that 
Oh yeah, no, actually no. But it, yeah, okay. yeah. So if I if I be a good boy while being attacked all day, um, for a year's end and follow my probation rules, supposedly they can say okay, the case is uh, over. But um, what's happening is uh, the officer Sean Dinsey being paid off is contacting Starbucks and coffee shop employees, and when they realize that I got endless proof on video. Sean Dinsey is now claiming that I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers, tried to make me like the enemy of the state, right? And he's shifting from, first it was I'm the next Vegas shooter, then it was I was the next Unabomber, now it's fabrications that um, I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers, trying to lock me away for life with statements on his Facebook account, how do we force people into mental institutions, Um uh, my point is, um, I have video footage show showing that when I walked in, when that police report was made, that I did nothing at all but re talk into a camera about my life, right, um, with proof of these incidences. Um, and I'm just calling you, I guess, to let you know what's going on because I kind of, me, I guess, jumping in front of that crowbar, this is the result of my life and it's kind of related to you, so... Um, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, it's insane, but that my family's going so age get ballistic. Where, where are you now? Are you, do you, I mean, your number came up as New York. Are you in New York? No, in New York? no, I'm in Woodland Hills. Oh, all right. It's okay. just a New York number, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can get any number associated with your phones now. It doesn't matter. You can just pick one. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right, man. Yeah, so. That's crazy. So, um. I don't know. I had an idea. I don't know if you want to do it. Um, like, sit down for, like, an hour and talk about that incident on camera, which would actually be helpful to me because they're trying to cover it all up. But that's totally um, up to you. Yeah, I hear you, man. Maybe. Let me think about it. Um, let's keep chatting for a while, maybe. I don't know. We'll figure some things out. Okay, well... Um, I'm totally game with that, but um, right. um, you got to hurry on that decision because the 23rd, um, they could get what they want. I can't tell you what's going to happen. For all I know, I'm going to go into court and they're going to say, okay, this thing's over, but it could go the opposite right. direction. So I'm, right. I'm putting you on kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm, putting, I'm just letting you know so if the shit hits the fan, the truth is out there. And I think that's right. important that I'm being hunted for no reason. Yeah, so. I, I, I hear you, man. Yeah, so if you want to, I don't know, if you want to talk about that or call me back or, yeah. yeah. yeah I'll give you a call back for sure. Okay. I'll give you a call back for sure. And I just want to make sure, Jen, Jen, you're there, right? Yeah. Okay, so some of the claims are that I've done something to you or I made you break up with Jason. Um... I just want to clarify that, you know, that's obviously not true, but you understand that or, you know, right? Unless you have an opposing argument, right? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, I think it's probably safe for Jen that, you know, we were in charge of our own lives here. We didn't need anybody to do anything for well, us. Well, yeah, exactly. That's, that's how rational people think. But my mother's freaking out about NASA and us hinting that I somehow did something to Jen, or, you know, like, that, this craziness, but, yeah, and then they say, and Jen has after me, and several other Jens after me, trying to get false confessions, just freaky things like this, right? All right, man. All right, so, uh, wild, no doubt about it, it's wild stuff. Yeah, well, it's not my fault, so, um, if you want, if you want to do that, give me a call, or you want to chat about that, give me a call. I'm just giving you a heads up. I'll call All right. you. Okay. Way, I'll give you a call, man. Okay, thanks, bro. All right. Hi, man. It's okay. been a long time. Yeah, okay, I know it has. It's been 18 years, right? Oh, wait, so what are you doing now? I mean, are you still working for, I think you're working, like, for an internet company, right? Yeah, I kind of punched out of that a while ago, and so uh, manufacturing padlocks at this point, so pretty... pretty oh, cool. really? That, like, um... Manufacturing? Are they your locks? Right. Yeah, they are, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Um, uh -oh. I can't remember. You uh, went off to West Point. What was your What was your degree at West Point? 
I did double E. The double E stuff. Double E? Computer, yeah, computer electrical engineering. Oh, electrical. Oh, really? So how did you get into, uh, how did you get in the logs and electrical engineering? Always long stories, right? Yeah, I know. Long stories. <laughs> Things take a while. You say you went, uh... uh we got to I'm going to punch, I got to punch because we're about where we need to be. Okay. Um, so we're driving, so I'll call, I'll call you back, though. Okay, definitely. Um, I'd appreciate that, and it's good to hear your voice. I take it this number, this 917-435-0286, is a good number? Yeah, that's my number. Oh, see, I think I'm losing you now. Yeah, yeah, that's my number. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, you're cutting out really bad. We're in a bad spot. Okay, I just called this number. All right, okay, thanks, guys. All right, uh, bye. Okay, so now that you've listened to the audio, there's kind of a whole other sub-layer of things going on based on Greg's um, verbal and tonal cryptic suggestive way he's talking, and I think it kind of sort of progresses as I'm talking and gets worse and worse. Um, first, he starts in with Buddy. Well, that's one of the provoking, repetitious uh, tactics, especially starting um, with Rody Morales trying to plant a trash bag full of marijuana on me, and the Starbucks employees on Topanga and Ventura uh, working with Rody to try to set me up before I even went to Starbucks, showing that they were hunting me down. The Starbucks Corporation with worldwide groups were hunting me down, and Coffee Bean Corporation. Uh, but Starbucks more deeper involved um, in these operations, hunting me down. Uh, one of their employees kept calling me Buddy, Roddy Morales, uh, and then worldwide groups, and then locking me in maximum security prison for no reason, saying Buddy to try to send me cryptic suggestive messages like I'm supposed to pick up on what that means. Um, the very first thing Greg Waugh says is Buddy kind of showing that he's linked and like I gotcha or something like that. Um, he also, in his conversations, keeps saying, punch. I'm going to punch out, I'm going to punch this. Sort of trying to send me innuendos and references directed at Jen Hess, who claims, uh, first she says I hit her, or someone hit her with a mask on, then comes over my house, um, no bruises, and then all of a sudden the world's hunting me down saying I hit Jen Hess. Uh, before that, it was about some of my artwork, uh, Mike Tyson composite at University of Colorado with a game character Katana saying that I'm a woman beater and I think I'm Mike Tyson and I'm a schizo and things like that from my artwork going from every piece of artwork ever created since five years old which doesn't make any sense right um, well, most importantly he kept saying man like a hundred times man this man that well, the man tactic has been going on for a year and a half, uh, especially with Starbucks Corporation on video from location to location to location of employees saying, man, hey man, how are you? Hi, uh, have a good day, man. Things like this all day and night. And all the people around my complex walking up and saying, starting a conversation with man in it. Uh, and random strangers everywhere worldwide for the last year and a half. And remember these tactics switch and change to, from thing to thing done in repetition like the buddy, right? Like a hundred times a day for, from person to person and try to trigger me to get me to go ballistic on someone to set me up, which has been going on since five years old. Um, he at one point says will do, which is mimicking to me joking around at my father's office. Um, and I think for a while he's calling me kid or kiddo which maybe he said like once or twice, which I think I was joking around in my father's office calling people kiddo, right? Um, so, um, that being said, you're seeing Greg exert the same provoking, we're going to set you up, we have complete anger and rage, we're lashing out in anger and rage at me, Kevin Perlman, with worldwide support for some reason, starting at five years old, to remove me from society with the government and then try to turn around. I didn't do anything. Um, 
he just flipped out, did this and that, blah, 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 even though there's nothing I've done, that's the motive, right? Now, the question you're probably asking me, or after listening to this, is why is the guy that Kevin jumped in front of the crowbar to save angry at me? Shouldn't he be like Kevin's a good friend and he jumped in front of a crowbar for me? Right? Hence, you've heard on this video him confessing that it happened. There is no doubt he confesses that this incident happened. Now the LAPD and anyone else will tell you that it never happened. I suffer from delusional disorders. I have memory problems. I have no concept of reality. I conform to media and movies. Um, yet, you hear it on this, Greg confesses, I jumped in front of a crowbar. He doesn't directly confess, but he does say, that was a long time ago, I can't remember a lot, blah, 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 flat out saying, yes, it did happen. Okay, so why is the guy mad at me for saving his life? Does that seem a little strange? Does that seem odd? Well, I'll tell you why. At least my theory, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate based on this done from one person to the next. Um, my family, okay, you can see from the psychological warfare tactics that they're trying to set me up and get a reaction. Man, 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 punch, 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 punch. Little hidden messages that I've hit women. Little messages that I'm a thief and stealing cars. Little messages that I'm a pedophile. Things like this over and over and over. But never directly said. Never directly said like most people do. Kevin, this is what you're accused of. Kevin, this is what I was told. None of that. It's always, I don't know you. You're imagining it. And then the constant provokings. Why? To set me up. To get a reaction. Working with the police and government. To lock me away in jail cells and mental institutions. Starting at five years old for no reason other than government flagging and labeling and then eradication operations. Okay, so that being said, we have a brother. He's been working on me my entire life since five years old. He's flicking me in the back of the ear. He's then showing me flicks or movies, trying to flip me out with movies. He's taking me on cruises with my father and Darren Moselle, and they're ordering uh, B-52s and kamikazes like 14 or... 15 of these a night, cramming them down my throat um, because my last name is Pearlman, like Pearl Harbor, and hinting about B-52s and kamikazes, trying to flip me out while I'm drunk. And then he goes out and he buys a Kershaw knife and he says, Kevin, here's a knife, um, in hopes he can flip me out and get me to go ballistic on him and say, Kevin tried to kill me and Kevin's a crazy man, uh, Kevin's a vile paranoid schizo. That's my brother. Okay. So now we have Greg Wall. My brother tells him, or tells me, Greg's a really good guy. Uh, Greg should, Jen should hang out with Greg while I'm off at University of Colorado, which sounds really strange, right? But possible. But it sounds really strange. I mean, most people don't talk like that. Hey, I have a girlfriend, you should hang out with this guy. I mean, most guys really don't talk like that. Especially... Greg's not in my brother's grade. Greg's in my grade. So my brother's not friends with Greg. So how would my brother know if Greg is a good guy or not? Because my brother doesn't really know Greg. Greg's my friend. That, Greg's not my brother's friend. So that's even stranger. Okay. So now, Greg's hanging out with Jen. They stage this whole I'm cheating on Jason thing. Right? Remember, uh, Jen's father is a judge. I can't tell you the relevance. All she has to do is say, cry wolf, that I did something to her, uh, which seems to be the case from every person I'm in contact with, especially women, uh, Corey Bixby, the cry wolf tactic, uh, Christy Reynolds, um, I think like a Brooke Weisbart or something in high school, um, <coughs> the Mike Show. Uh, Mike Cho, what was the other guy's name? Stefano Cho, Mike Cho is in uh, Tunix class. Uh, Quigley telling me to punch Paul Schaefer didn't work, right? 
uh, things like this from college to college, place to place, you name it. Me doing nothing wrong, them trying to set me up or frame me. Um, so all Jenna has to say is, oh, Kevin raped me, Kevin did this. Kevin lashed out in anger and rage, even though I've never really had much of any contact with Jen Yang. Just like I never really had much contact with, um, what was her name? Um, Carissa Brands. Paul Humphrey's girlfriend sent, has sent after me the same time Mike Huntley was in in my life, where they staged this thing how I supposedly uh, drove her into a mental institution from my maybe three or four times of interactions with this girl while Paul was dating her, right? It's like, doesn't even make any sense. Okay, but they're, cre they're creating these, uh, these fantasies or fictional stories to give to the entire planet with billions of government dollars on these operations. Okay, so now let's do the math. None of this makes sense once you start picking up apart the details, right? None of it really makes any sense. The way people are acting and behaving consistent with the situation. Consistently, Mike, consistently, Greg Waugh should be in debt to me and be like, your brother's a fucking nut job. Not, I'm helping your brother. Okay, so what is it Greg wanted? A reaction with my brother. Okay, so let me explain it. They staged this thing. They staged this Jen is cheating on Jason thing. Greg steals Jen. Um, clearly knowing they're all staging this thing. Um, my brother, Greg comes over my house in his Camaro. My brother comes out with a crowbar, running after Greg. I jump in front of the crowbar. I did the right thing. But what was Greg and my brother hoping I would do? Help my brother. Okay, so after this, my brother gives me the blood is thicker and water speech. I need to spy on Greg and um, help him with these evil, demented, violent things. And my decision is no, definitely not. What, it, what, what it was it that my brother was hoping he could do? Turn me to be like him based on pure pressure to thug and bully Greg. But he failed. So um, after this, they realized, especially Greg, oh shit, he didn't fall for it. What if he finds out? We're trying to manipulate him into a situation to make him look like a violent, paranoid schizo, working together, kind of like the good cop, bad cop thing with Jason and Greg. And Mike Huntley's also befriending me, working on with the angles of Sam Paul Humphrey. And like usual, they fail. But now what? Now they're stuck. They're stuck in a lie. But it's not just a lie. It's a crime. It's a setup. We're going to rid Kevin Perlman of the world. Now, Kevin Perlman, me, I grow up, I get older, and I don't know what's going on until I turn 29, and I start to figure out something's really wrong with my life. Because these things are consistent from person to person. Every person I meet on the internet, on IRC, um, at Southern Oregon State College, at University of Colorado, each and every one all working together to do the same things, which I'm talking about with these Greg Law situations and my brother and Jen Yang. Okay, so now, oh shit, Kevin knows. Kevin's figuring out. Kevin's finding out. We can't let Kevin think about the situation because he's going to look back at his life now that he's curious what the fuck is going on and he's going to put the puzzle pieces together. And we can't have that. Well, now it's too late. Because they wouldn't let me live my life, the cat's out of the bag. I know everything that is going on is still going on and was going on. But what I can tell you is the judicial system has been, is and has been hunting me since five years old. And if it's not this thing, it's the next thing. If it's not the next thing, it's the next thing. If it's not the next thing, it's the next thing. What? Until they can get what they want. Their obsessive hate and rage in this mass 
unheard of hate crime against me, which is a 47 or 42 year worldwide crime, the largest crime known to man ever in history against one man to eradicate someone and refuse to leave him alone and tell the truth about what's going on. Um, now, is Greg Waugh stuck in that? Yes. Is my family stuck in that? Yes. Is the police stuck in that? Yes. Is the judicial system stuck in that? Yes. Are people in Congress and Senate stuck in that? Yes, most likely. Are people involved in the White House, and the government of the United States of America stuck in that? Uh, I would have to say probably yes because I went down with policeabuse.com all across the U.S. to prove what's being done to me worldwide. And one of their counter surveillance uh, things was to, Kevin, walk in front of the White House with all the tourists with your camera and just be a tourist for 10 minutes and see what happens. And at that point, um, White House security asked I walked away, followed me up the street, and then followed me waiting across the bookstore kitty corner trying to scare thug and intimidate me and I wanted to double check so I then walked out and I walked to a bakery and he followed me down the street standing on the corner by the bakery now if someone can explain to me if I'm imagining this and nobody knows me why White House security of the United States of America White House security the White House with the President at the time I think President Obama was in it was following me all throughout the city trying to thug, ter terrorize, intimidate me quiet White House security okay if White House security is on the defensive this goes right up to the top now what are we talking about? well I can't tell you specifically what we're talking about but we got the psychology community flagging me for kill operations at five years old. The government, judicial system, police, every security company, and now worldwide support saying we're all going to get together, hunt down and exterminate this person for no reason at all other than we labeled him at five years old, we think this, we think that, he seems like this, he seems like that. I don't know anyone that can even possibly label a five-year-old to begin with, which is absurd. But that's when this starts. That's when they work on me, uh, trying to send me a hidden met my father, wanting me to see the movie Wizards by Ralph Bakshi, and then instantly my family and my brother trying to make it look like I conform to the movie, my brother playing the evil brother, and all these freaky things with guns and things like this, right? That I had no clue was going on. I found out this was going on at 29. It took me to about 38 years old to really start to understand and realize and it's a solidify in my mind based on watching repetitious all day and night 24-7 attacks uh, with the threats, you don't talk or we kill you, um, and the varying subsets of similar threats and different methods saying the same thing um, with full police and government support. Um, so I just kind of want to sum that up for you because this is just one out of endless incidences like this, which I supposedly am a violent, paranoid, schizo, conform to media, and have no sense of reality, and, um, and, and suffer delusional disorders compared to, uh, according to Detective Shapiro, who is flat out holding a piece of uh, video evidence of me being attacked by the dog attacker and his dog with photos of me bleeding in the hospital, which she says never happened. And it's up on my website as well. Okay? So if that happened, if this happened, right here you can hear Gregoire confessing. Um, yeah, I remember that. Then you can bet your ass that they're all involved and they don't want me talking. Right? Okay. So you've seen it right here. You've seen the proof. It's undisputable. Yes, I did jump in front of a crowbar to, for Gregoire to save his life. Was he really in danger? I can't tell you. You can't know that. 
all you can do is try to protect your friend if a crowbar is swinging through the air, right? Okay, so you get the idea. And then the real question here, why does Greg seem mad at me for saving his life? Okay, so also uh, I lost track. You know, after we graduated high school, I went off to Southern Oregon State College and University of Colorado. Uh, Greg went off to West Point. Uh, I think his father wanted him. His father was like a military father, wanted him to go to West Point. Um, later on, he contacted me maybe around 28, 27, uh, when I had my company Signet with Mike Huntley, an internet host provider, and apparently he was working in some kind of computer network host, similar computer network host environment type of company, and according to uh, today's conversation, apparently I find out that he's working um, some kind of internet-based government operations, um, doing computer networks and routing and all this. Um, I don't know. Um, I do know that um, the internet was originally developed by the military and then it trickled down to colleges and then now to the private sector, but it originated with the government. Uh, and I, my brother wanted me to, my brother was um, calling me up on the phone saying, Kevin, you gotta try out this internet thing. Um, working both sides of the fence, the reason he wanted me on the internet so bad was to send people after me and broaden the scope of people he was kind of creating chaos and riling up. Um, and so that was in around 1994 when the internet was strictly telnet, email, telnet, and the only thing you could really do was log in from college to college, going through the library things, or pulling up some basic personal data, uh, like the white pages, um, and that was it. And then it started on a very basic level, some very basic browsers, I can't remember the names of them, uh, before the AOL, uh, a yeah, the AOL days, which changed everything. Um, so, um, just a little tidbit of information. Um, and so, um, you know, 